In this podcast, we're going to be catching up with Catherine Willis, um, because Catherine's had a few changes going on in her life over the last three years, and it's just going to be great to find out a little bit more about that. Uh, Catherine, um, people may well be aware um, that you are no longer in the church office. I've certainly noticed the lack of Catherine Willis rotor emails in my inbox. Can you tell us what you're up to now? Yes, thank you, Sarah. Um, So I stepped down from the church office in April, which was quite a big change for me after being there for 10 years. But I know that role is in in safe hands with lovely Jen Green now taking over from me there. Um, And for me, I've been continuing with my ordination training. So I'm now in my third and final year of that course. Um, It's a part time course I'm doing run by the Diocese of Guildford. And We meet on Monday evenings and sometimes at the weekends as well in Guildford when we can in person. But of course, like most of the rest of life at the moment, we're on Zoom for our training just now. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about what does ordination training actually involve? Yeah, um, it's a lot of reading and a lot of writing essays. So each term we look at a different module and there's usually a couple of essays to write for that. Um, and the rain, there's been quite a range of those, you know, um, focus on the Bible, mission and evangelism, church history. And this term we've been doing Christian doctrine. So that's involved topics like the Trinity or why Jesus died on the cross. Um, or last week we were doing heaven and hell. That was quite interesting. And we look at all of those from a lot of different angles. So we explore what theologians through the centuries have said and written about them but most importantly we work out what we think for ourselves as well. It it all sounds incredibly interesting Um, and I understand there's a different element to your training next term which means we won't be seeing much of you after Christmas. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Absolutely yes so everybody in the Church of England who's training to be ordained gets to spend a term on placement at a different church to their own and that's what I'm doing next term so from the 10th of January until the 4th of April which is Easter Sunday I'm going to be at All Saints Church in Kingston so if you know Kingston um, it's a church right in the middle of the town centre on the marketplace and I'm going to be serving and worshipping there for three months. It's, it's quite a different church to Claygate. They've got a great choir and organs. So I'm looking forward to the musical side, but also to exploring a different church tradition and getting involved in some of the work in the community there as well. I just hope that I will actually be able to experience stuff in person rather than it just being swapping one set of Zoom meetings for another set of Zoom meetings. Um, But what that means is next term, I'll be stepping back completely away from Holy Trinity. So I'm going to miss you all. Um, It's going to be really weird for me not to be around, but I won't be involved in Sunday services. I won't be serving here in any of the other ways that I'm currently involved. Um, I won't be on staff team for a term. I won't be answering my church emails. Basically, I'm just not here for a term. But I will be back and I'm really looking forward to catching up with you all again after Easter and sharing an update on the placement and what I've been up to in the meantime. So, yeah. And then when I get back, gosh, I'll be on the countdown to ordination, which is scheduled for the 4th of July 2021, God willing and COVID permitting which will be here before we know it. Um, Gosh, you've got a busy term ahead of you then. And what happens after ordination? Do you then have to go somewhere else for a curacy? Uh, No, I get to stay in Claygate, um, which is good news for me. And I hope good news for the church as well. Um, So I'm doing the same route as Stuart Sadler has done just a few years ago and Mike Hull before him and it's something called ordained local ministry so this is a a route for people who feel called to minister in their own church as an ordained person Um, so it means that I won't ever be a vicar of a church but I get to stay in Claygate and be a curate on the team here with Patrick and Richard and the rest of the team and in the fullness of time, when I complete my curacy, I'll still be staying in Claygate as a permanent ordained member of the team here. 
Well, that is certainly good news for us, Catherine. That's brilliant. Um, can we take a step back? Because you've talked about being called to this role. And I just wonder if you can share a little bit more of your journey and how you came to go down this path. Absolutely, I'd love to. Um, so let me go right back to start with briefly. Um, when I was a child, I grew up attending church at Christmas and Easter, and I got confirmed as a teenager. But I would say for me, my faith journey really started when I went to university. This is in 1993. And in my first week at uni, I became a Christian. Um, it was just the most amazing thing. I heard a talk on the parable of the lost son, and I just knew at that point that God was calling me home into a relationship with him. And then going on from there, over the years, my faith grew and deepened in lots of different ways. But I think the next key marker point for me really then was in 2010 I was here at Holy Trinity by that point married to Mike and I attended the Growing Leaders course which I know is something that you Sarah know a lot about I think you were leading on it when I was on the course and that was when for me I began to understand the whole idea of calling for the first time and it Mm -hmm. crystallized for me into into three areas so There's the primary call to follow Jesus, and that's something that we all share. Um, But I also felt called specifically into um, my marriage with Mike. I was aware of that as a calling and also to the role that I just started at that point in the church office. But even then in 2010, I kind of felt, I had a sense that that last one, that job in the church office was time limited, that God was calling me to that for a season. Um, but perhaps not forever. And then going on from there, um, I began to get opportunities to lead services and preach. And the other thing I did over the next few years was some, I did a distance learning course in theology. So I got to dip my toe in the water of what studying theology was like, and I loved it. And do you know what people began saying to me, have you ever thought thought about getting ordained? And at the time I was like, uh, no, I have not. (laughs) But, you know, sometimes like other people spot something before you spot it in yourself. And it was a bit like that. Um, And the other strand going on at the same time was I was learning a bit more about myself as a person and how some of the difficult things I've been through in my life have shaped who I am. And how God can use me as me to minister to other people without needing to put on a mask or pretend to be somebody I'm not. So, yeah, I then began to think and pray a bit more intentionally about whether God actually was calling me down this route of ordination. And I went on a retreat just as I was thinking and praying about this. And I had one of those real God moments, you know, so just mm. sometimes out of the blue. God just um, really shows up and I was sitting in a chair in the retreat house and I just prayed God show me how you want me to use this time on retreat and I mean it doesn't normally happen like this for me I have to say this is really (laughs) unusual but on this occasion I had a really clear answer and God said to he said to me turn to two Corinthians okay so I turned to two Corinthians Um, And right there at the beginning of the first chapter of 2 Corinthians, I found these verses, I'm going to read it, and it, it just spoke right to my heart about the ministry that God was calling me to. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Mm, And God just really spoke to me through that about the ministry he was calling me into. And shortly after that, I began to meet with the diocesan director of Ordinands, commonly known as the DDO. And it was his job to guide and support me through the formal stages of discerning whether God was calling me to ordain ministry. Um, In May 2017, I went on something called a BAP, which is a three day selection conference with experienced assessors who discern whether to recommend you to start training. And praise God, they said yes. And in September 2017, I started the course that I'm now on. 
which is wonderful. And you know, thank you for telling us your story, which is what you've done, and and showing us how God uses pieces of puzzles to bring things together at the right time, including some of those perhaps difficult experiences in life. God wants to use those now going forward, which is hugely encouraging. What would you say to anybody who might be wondering for themselves, how is God calling me? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first thing I want to say is that it's not all about ordination because that's not that's only one way in which God calls people. And it's certainly not the most important way. Um, So one thing I want to say is that we all share that same primary call that I talked about to Mm -hmm. love Jesus and to follow him. Um, and to serve and worship him which is just amazing and that's something we all share Mm. Um, but then when it comes to the secondary calling that's different for each one of us you know perhaps for you God is calling you to serve in your work role maybe Mm. think about how you can more intentionally live for God in a work context or perhaps it's about caring for your family or volunteering in some way or there's so many other possibilities Um, But just don't rule anything out, you know, be open to how God might be calling you. And a great way of helping discern that is speak to someone you trust. So that might be your small group leader or me or Sarah or one of us on the staff team, um, just to help you figure that out for yourself. But Sarah, you're the expert on this, um, not me, because you know a lot about this area. So what would you add? I think in a very simple level, it's about praying a prayer and praying that prayer on a daily level and in times of greater reflection to say, Lord, how do you want to work in and through me today? Um, Because so often we can look for something big and far away, but God is calling us to do things now. Uh, And I would also just echo that primary call. If we stay close to God. Um, God will reveal the paths to us. So I think at its most simple level is love the Lord and just say, how do you want me to be used for you today? Absolutely. That's a prayer we can pray every single day. Brilliant. And how can we be praying for you at this time particularly? Thank you. Yes, I, I'd love you to be praying for me as I go on placement next term. I think just pray that God would be at work through this experience and really broaden my understanding of what it means to be church and to do mission in a different context and that I'm able to bring some of that back to Claygate when I return as well Mm. and I think you know next term is going to be pretty busy one for me with juggling the placement and the New Testament module and Mm. essays and studying so just pray for that juggling and for you know family time and rest time as well not to get squeezed out And I think, you know, one final thing, Christmas is going to look different this year for me and for our family, as it will for for so many others. And I think just prayer for for us and our family time this Christmas as well. Thank Mm. you. you. So so specific things we can be praying for there, but just a general prayer for God to to sustain you through what is going to be a very busy start to next year um, ahead of ordination. Um, And, you know, it's not the only thing that can sustain you. Prayer is important. um, But in our house, lockdown has sometimes been known as chock down. And chocolate has been very important in sustaining us through this time. So, you know, if Catherine needed any sweeteners that were dropped on her front door, um, Catherine, what chocolate would it be that might sustain you? Oh, well, I mean, it's so important, Sarah. I just, you know, chocolate gets me through. And my all-time favourite, it has to be those Lindt, Lindor Red Bulls, you know, the milk chocolate ones. It's just like, oh, my goodness, particularly in the run-up to Christmas. They even look Christmassy as well. So what's not to love? They certainly do. And there are about 50 different flavours these days now. So plenty of options there of ways to stay sustained. Catherine, thank you so much. It has been great to get this update and I'm sure many will be encouraged by it and be assured of our prayers for you now. You might not be in Claygate, but you certainly will be within our prayers. We can assure you of that. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Sarah.